Texas could win. James Brown on the opening drive drove it down found Pat Fitzgerald who fumbled out of bounds 13 more yards later in the drive it is Priest Holmes standing up into the end zone Texas had not allowed a touchdown on the opening drive all year they march all the way downfield and Brown wants more but throws into the end zone into the Huskers Vaughn D gets a lecture from John McAvick and the Huskers went down and scored on an 80 yard drive to tie it it was 10 all in the second quarter when Holmes bust loose again 61 yards bursting through the Huskers to make it 17-10. Wide open game. Nebraska comes back. D'Angelo Evans, a 23-yard scamper, knocks off a couple of would-be tacklers to tie the game at 17. The starting tailback, Amon Green, not available with an injury. Evans himself banged up, but they kept calling his number. On the option, Evans twirls in. Nebraska up 24-23. Next drive. Enzo. Touchdown for Sean Jackson. The Huskers up 27-23, and then they thought their D could take over. But Brown kept on charging. Hung in the pocket. Lost it over the defender. Wayne McGarity will go untouched. 66 yards. Longhorns back on top, 30-27. Brown remaining confident. After a punt, Osborne's Huskers have Texas pinned deep. Brown athletically will lose the tackle and what a grab by Fitzgerald the one-handed grab but it's not enough for the first down they're inside their own 30. McAvitt wants to go for it he's up by three in his own territory what a call on fourth and inches the pass to Derek Lewis he's off and running the Huskers will catch him but it's a 61 yard pickup that settled the game Holmes his third touchdown he ran for 120 yards 10 of them there Texas goes up by 10. They scored on seven of their ten possessions in the game against one of the five best defenses in the land. The most points that have been scored against Nebraska since the 1991 Citrus Bowl for the first wall work. He had three interceptions, but he connects here with David Saroff for the score. Wyoming head coach Joe Tiller loves it. Wyoming by three on the extra point now. Aaron Langley, uh-oh. So Corey Weedle will throw to Todd Groskopf for the two-point conversion that works, so the Cowboys by five. Same score, first and goal for the BYU Cougars. Give the ball to Brian McKenzie. He'll get three yards out of this one. And then second and goal. Give it to him again, but this time McKenzie is stuffed. Third and goal now. The QB, Steve Sarkeesian's pass incomplete to Chad Lewis. Joe Tiller knows it's fourth down. Fourth and goal, Sarkeesian. Rolling right. He was 26 of 37 for 250 yards in this game, and boy, can he scramble in the pocket, but his throw in the end zone is incomplete. Lavelle Edwards, Cougars cannot convert. Wyoming still up five, just over two minutes left. Aaron Langley into punt. Oh, wait a minute, is he? He takes the snap. He's running to his left, and he's running to his right. Not a new dance step. He goes out of the end zone for the safety that looked rather intentional. Would Tiller's strategy work? Wyoming up three, second and 10, BYU ball. You see the time, Sarkeesian back to pass. Here he goes. Why not? There's a hole 13 yards to the 28 yard line of Wyoming. He's tough. Under 15 seconds left. Sarkeesian hitting Mark on to Waya for six yards, but he's not in the end zone. A timeout is called. Ethan Pockman comes in 20 yards away. It's good. We're tied. We're heading to OT. Pockman fired up. Wyoming's first possession. Corey Weedle attempting a 47 yard field goal. Oh, not even close, so Tiller hoping his team would get another chance. But on BYU's first possession, that guy named Pockman again connecting from 32 yards out. An exciting finish for the BYU Cougars. Ethan Pockman, the Mercer Island, Washington native, the hero. He had four. The tide would be up one. Danny Werfel just beginning. The quick pass to Rydell Anthony, his favorite target. 21 yards for the score. Two-point conversion work. Florida up seven. Gators up 10 in the third. Punter Robbie Stevenson trouble with a snap. He fumbles right out of bounds. So Bama will take over at the Gator 5. Your very next play. Dennis Riddle, not joking. Around the right side for the five-yard score. It's the Gators by three. A 65-yard drive and capped by this 13-yard touchdown pass to Rydell Anthony is second of the game. More from him in a bit. Florida by 10. Alabama's next possession. Third at their own five, as you can see, Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens, what a pass. Fighting Michael Vaughn wide open. They didn't think Kitchens could throw that far, obviously. So the Gators lead now just three, 31 to 28. But back would come Danny Werfel two plays later. Oh, you think that's far? Check this one out. 85 yards to Jacquez Green all alone. 
10-point lead once again for the Gators. Werfel's fifth touchdown pass of the game. Fourth quarter, icing on the cake for Stallings' crew. Werfel, 21 yards to Anthony. Anthony, his third touchdown catch. Werfel's sixth touchdown pass of the game, and the Gators end up with a 15-point victory. The 97th all-time meeting. You know the president switches sides at halftime. Always fair, that man. Army down, 21-3 in the second. Quarterback Ronnie Makeda, though, taking care of that 44-yard touchdown, cutting the lead to 21-10. And then in the third, Bobby Williams takes the pitch. Left side, and he is gone. 81 yards later, he is in the end zone. Navy down 21-19 after a failed two-point conversion. The cadets of Army up by four. Navy's Chris McCoy rolling out. His pass dropped. Navy looks like they're in trouble, but they have one more shot. This one. No, sir. Garland Gay comes up with a big interception for Army. Many Navy tries in the last couple of minutes fall short, and Army wins it 28-24.